11 v 11 is the game, soccer. I didn't see any coaches raise their hand if there was a soccer coach around. Is, do I have any soccer coaches? Thank you, oh yes, thank you, Andrew, well done. So I'm sitting down because uh, I'm getting ready to play at noon uh, with my oldest son who's back in town. We're gonna play futsal, and anybody heard of that game? Futsal, it's an it's a, it's a in, indoor game, a ball that's a little harder than a soccer ball, a little smaller, a size four ball, and when you get hit with it, it stings. And we laugh at each other when we get hit, but it's just uh, a great privilege to be able to be a coach and a pastor. And I love what one of the first speakers said that, you know, coaches, we like to steal stuff, right? I mean, one of my seminary professors said to me a long time ago, you know, Tony, it is okay. Plagiarism in the name of the gospel is okay. So whatever you're stealing from one another today, it's okay, okay? You break that command, but, but in the name of the gospel, awesome. Um, yeah, so my, my topic from Tim is spiritual wellness, so I'm just going to ask you today, how you doing? Yeah? So now let me ask this, how are you really doing? <laughs> Better now that we've heard speakers, but, but, but just think about that. Uh, any one of you, uh, or have you heard of the great Shema? You know, Shema is a Hebrew word. Shema means to hear. And not only does it mean to hear, but the connotation in the Hebrew is not hear, but also obey. The great Shema's confession of the Jewish faith, right? It's from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, Shema, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is what? One. Therefore, love your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And then Jesus in the New Testament actually adds to that. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. How are you doing with that? How am I doing with that. It's been a busy month. Jeff Olson knows this. He can, you know, he can't get a hold of me sometimes, right? It's been a busy month for me. And I feel like sometimes I'm not loving God with all my heart and all my soul and my strength. I have so many responsibilities. How am I spiritually? You ever feel like that? You ever guilt yourself into saying, man, I'm falling short. I'm falling short of this love test from the scriptures. I do. There's a portion in the Bible where this expert in the law is trying to trap, actually the word in the Greek is trap, or to test Jesus. And he asks this question, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? By the way, it's this third attempt where, where the Pharisees and the ruling council there are trying to trap Jesus in his words. And, and then Jesus responds, in which the lawyers, they really can't deny his answer. He says, it's the great Shema. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 6, which I just read. You can't argue with that, right? And then Jesus says, not only that, love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love neighbor. How you doing with that? It's kind of a checkup time for us, okay, as coaches. I, I like what you said, Matt, um, how love, right? Love your team. Love your players. Well, I was busy coaching a semi-pro women's game yesterday and my high school boys team, they lost. I'm gonna love them on Tuesday, let me tell you. <laughs> I love them a lot, but I'm, thankfully it's gonna be, you know, a couple days before that time. And, and I just love it, you know, to, to be able to handle their emotions, to really get the best out of them and to love them, to show Christ in me to them. But how about you, loving God with your whole heart, mind, and strength, loving your neighbor as yourself? How are you doing that today? How are you doing it this week, this month, this, this year? My answer, uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, not perfectly. That would be my answer. Checkup time. I have a love-hate relationship with checkups, annual checkups. I don't want to be the kind of guy that says, you know what? I'm healthy, I don't want to go to the doctor. If I go to the doctor, you know, that's wimpy, or if I go to the doctor, they're just gonna find something wrong with me. Well, a few years ago, right when I turned 50, I went in for my annual checkup, and they said, well, Mr. Bose, if you weren't so healthy, well, thank you very much, we'd send you to the ER. What? 
my blood pressure was skyrocketing. For whatever reason, I hadn't been in for two years or three, whatever number it was for a checkup. I went in there and they said, yeah, you're 140 over 90. What, we weren't even gonna tell you, you know, but you're healthy enough, let's see if we can do this, you know, try this, you know, I'm like, doc, I don't ever wanna take pills. I, I just don't, I don't wanna do it, you know, let me, I, I'll stop eating salt, you know, I'll do stewed whatever. Month, month goes by, how's my blood pressure? Sorry, Mr. Bose, it's just genetics. Like, Mom, why'd you take me off the Philippine Islands so I'm eating big, big Macs now, you know, and not fish and, and rice? But getting an annual checkup, you know, and being able to take those God-given pills, right? Because doctors, whoever creates them, they're scientific, it's awesome. It's a gift from God. Praise God, my, my heart's pumping better, right? Uh, my pressure's better. I'm taking it, and it just, it's hard pill to swallow. For, for about six months, I guess. But now it, it's, it's really nothing. And um, I don't know about you, but maybe you're like me, maybe you're not. Um, more disciplined, less disciplined, but I've had seasons in my life where I went to the gym regularly to work out. And let me ask you this, you ever get out of bed in the morning, you know, on the day when you know it's gym time, right? And you fight with yourself? You ever fight with yourself? Oh, I'm just gonna press snooze a couple times, right? Or Oh, got to force myself to put on those exercise clothes, which I put in the bathroom the night before because I don't want to wake up my wife and I don't want to wake up my kids that they're sleeping. And you still fight with yourself. You know, you're just debating. You're arguing with yourself. What's best, you know, run on that boring treadmill or rest? You know, what's better? And you get up, you put the tennis shoes on, you're almost out the door and you're just like, nope. I'm going to go to the couch and sleep for a little bit more. I'm going to eat maybe some cereal, read my Bible, uh, you know, and then wait for my wife and, and my kids to wake up. But you would think after so many years of that battling and that time-consuming, energy-consuming, like arguing with yourself, that that would finally stop. Nope. <laughs> There's still many days, and I don't know about you, but many days that I still play that mind game, right? It's like rolling the dice, you know? Wait a minute, is gambling a sin? Wait, different topic. Oh yeah, stay on task. <laughs> well, my exercise life is really never consistent. And that's never gonna stop this side of heaven. Too much going on. My grandkids are visiting me for the first time in St. Louis. You know, I just coached this game last night. I have 27 player evaluations to do before the end of June. As a grandpa, as a father, as a pastor, I gotta baptize uh, a young man tomorrow or a, 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 an infant tomorrow. And a, wed a, a wedding message I gotta do. You see the tent that's out there? That's part of what, you know, a, a police officer's gonna get married. We got a rehearsal this afternoon, all these things. So I have this devotion in my head, right? I have a, a baptism and it's just all that stuff's going on. And I'm sure you have just as much stuff in your life. So how are you? How well are you? Even through this COVID time, right? This is a great topic. I love that you picked it, all this about our health and our wellness. And, and guess what? Just as my exercise and physical wellness goes like this, so does my spiritual wellness. Why? Because even though we create these habits and we write them in our brains over and over again, right? And we know it has benefits, but I also know that I'm gonna struggle to balance my life correctly. How about you? So it's a checkup time. You know, even though I know something's good for me, I know something that's best for me, like reading God's word daily. I know we're going to always struggle because the truth of scripture says that we are sinner and saint at the same time. I'll drop a Latin phrase on you. Simul justus et peccator. Simultaneously, justus righteous and sinner. At the same time how do I know that because in the scriptures st. Paul wouldn't have said this in these words put off your old self put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires and put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness and we don't do that one time we do it daily we do it 
regularly because many things are going to continue to scream out for our attention, aren't they? And they're always going to, we're always going to hear that internal voice, you know, the ones that put guilt on us or the devil's words that whisper in your ear, you're too tired, you're spent, you have this to do, you have all these voices from the world, really the enemies that we have, right? The devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh. So several years ago, I saw this little, um, this little symbol that our greater church body, welcome to Faith Luther Church, by the way. Uh, it's a privilege for you guys to be here. Uh, but I think it's in your packet, so you want to look that up. It's, it's, it's just this kind of spiritual wellness kind of wheel. Do you see that? I'm going to talk about that for just a minute. It's based on God's Word, psychology, science, science relational health, and and. If you just look at that for a moment, we're going to have a little bit of a conversation. It's called the Lutheran Wholeness Wheel, and it identifies really concretely some areas of wellness that impact each of us as God's people. So if we neglect or avoid these areas in our lives, we're going to feel that sometimes in small ways, sometimes in large ways in our bodies, in our minds, in our, in our strength, in our families, in our spirit, and, and, and more so. And I love what it has in the very center, at the core. Do you see that? It's your baptismal identity. Who you are and whose you are. And throughout it, on the outside, wrapped all around it, is that spiritual well-being. And I love how that just captures the thought for me so importantly because we're clothed in the righteousness of God. So coaches, do something for me. Just breathe. Just relax. God's got this. He's clothed you in His righteousness. You're holy. You're set apart. You're sanctified. You've been given salvation. Heaven is yours, not because of anything you've done. What Jesus has done, amen? You're saved by grace through faith. And it's not from yourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works, so that we don't boast. Both grace and faith are gifts given by God. And I love the scripture from 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him, that's Jesus, who had no sin to be what? To be sin for us so that through him we might become the righteousness of God. In your baptism, by faith, God has surrounded you with his righteousness and all these things come into play because of that first. We start with who we are and our identity in him. And so we trust that promise this morning. Do you trust that this morning? You do because you're, the spirit of God is in you, as, as you pointed out. That spirit is in you to believe that truth, to be not believe the devil's lies, not believe the lies that we have in us, not believe the world, world's lies, but Christ in us. So we relax and we enjoy. Amen? So then everything we do, if you look at that wheel then, everything we do, right, is a kind of an investment that God has made on our life, whatever we're into as coaches, as pastors, as friends, as neighbors, whatever it is, physically, emotionally, vocationally, it all flows out of God's wellness in Christ given to us. And he continues to give us those gifts as we're here today in fellowship as Christian coaches and athletes together, right? Everything. God cares about and is overseeing every organ, every sinew in our body, every hair on our head, every late relationship we have. It's all under his care and his concern. So what does that mean? It means that when I do go out for a run, right, <laughs> that God's taking care of my physical wellness. When I play soccer, you know, which my doctor, by the way, whoever said don't stop squatting, my doctor and my wife was in the room said, yeah, Tony, don't stop playing soccer. Like, yes! My wife's been always, you know, saying, when are you going to stop? When are you going to hang it up? When are you going to stop? My doctor says, don't stop playing. John, okay? So that's all I needed. So I'm playing. I'm playing until I can't go anymore, even though I'm falling down a little bit more. Uh, but we are under his care 
and his concern even um, in, in all that we do physically and relationally too, so that when I have a friend that I go out with, uh, yesterday, through soccer, I met this Muslim man for the second time because of, of playing soccer in our gym. The first time, we were on our knees right here. And I said, it's okay to kneel. It's okay to put your hands up like this uh, because when you have this kind of attitude, you say, God, take whatever it is you need to take out of my life and put in whatever it is you need in. Kind of this stance. So he's praying there. I met him for the second time. He's a Muslim from Iraq that really can't go back to his country because his family has kind of worked with the Americans. And the insight that he gave me about the Iranian pressure there in, in Iraq and all that was just mind-blowing. Stuff you don't get in the news. Uh, but, but that relationship started because of soccer. And to be able to speak to him when I'm doing that, you know, God has taken care of my relational well-being. I don't have to feel guilty that I had an extra hour or whatever. We, we did this uh, so that the Holy Spirit might come into his life too. When you read a new book, right? When you go to a conference, God's growing your mind intellectually and, and it's, it's covered by God's spiritual well-being over your life so we can rest in God's word. Of course, this list could go on and on, ways you can identify right today that God is using you to grow. But here's a scripture verse that I want to share with you. Ephesians 4, 15 through 16. It reminds us about this journey that we're all on to grow together. And it says this, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. I love that. I'm going to take that quote. Where was that from again, Matt? That love, your coach said that to you? Just love. Yeah, love and love. So I just pray that we spur one another on together so that we have our minds, our bodies, our souls, our families, our congregations, our neighbors, right? For the sake of our neighbors who don't know Jesus, we grow together. Amen? Let me pray for you, okay? I know that I skipped a prayer this morning because I was with my grandkids. Like, ah, Tim, I gotta come late. I'm sorry, I just can't. This is the first time. So, but let me pray for you. Would you mind? Father, thank you so much for this group. Thank you that your word goes forth through these men and women, one to another, that we have fellowship with you because of your spirit. And I pray, Lord, that that spirit who is the teacher would point us to you, Jesus, our Savior, all our days, and from this day, would you keep us safe from the evil one, our own sinfulness, our flesh, and just point us uh, to you each and every day. I ask it in Jesus' name, and all God's people say, amen. amen.